I've been in freelance videography or filmmaking for the last five years. And through that, I've been able to use a bunch of different cameras, a ton of cameras actually, and a bunch of different lenses and other pieces of gear that helped me make my job a little bit easier. Now, in today's video, I'm not gonna tell you specifically what to buy, but I'm gonna give you six different categories that you can use to help yourself as a freelance filmmaker or creator, but we'll get there. Now, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is going to be wireless transmission. Now, this is one of the things that not only helped me with the client experience, but it also has really practical uses on set. Now, if you're somebody that has someone like a first AC pulling focus for you when you're using cinema lenses, they're gonna to need to see exactly what they're pulling focus to and from. And that's where you're gonna use something like a wireless transmission system in order for your focus puller to actually see the image and pull focus accurately. If you're someone that's a solo operator or you work in a small team, having wireless transmission is also really good for the client experience. Now, the way that this is gonna make money is that you could use this as a line item to charge your client, or you could actually include it in your package and it could act as not only a way to make your sets look more professional, but it's also a get out of jail free card. Oftentimes when I'm on a client shoot, there's always something that's gonna need a little bit of a tweak or something that's gonna need a little bit of a change of direction, even if you make a plan. And one of the things I like doing is having that wireless monitor for my client. So if I wanna get approvals for a certain shot or how something's going to change, I'm able to get that approval right away. And if there's any discrepancy in post or when I'm delivering the project, they're actually there in real time seeing it as it's actually happening. This is super useful whether you're working in a small team or a bigger set, and you could also hook up multiple different monitors for multiple different departments. Now, I've used different systems for wireless transmission. I've used the Axoon Cineview, I've used the Hollyland 4K, I've used the Hollyland Mars monitor, and right now I'm using the DJI transmission system. And a bunch of them are going to be a little bit different depending on which one you get between the distance that you could actually have wirelessly from your camera to the actual transmission system, the latency, which is going to be really Really important for focus pullers and overall just the build quality and some of the other features in terms of what it can connect to between a monitor that's going to be from the same brand or setting up as a full lidar setup you could choose a variety of these guys and i could actually leave these in the description down below and you could check them out for yourself now the second one is going to be a teleprompter now i've been using a teleprompter for quite a while because a lot of my work i'm doing ads for facebook or doing ads for instagram and talent doesn't always remember their lines in fact some of the scripts are really long and i don't blame them either now in terms of a teleprompter in terms of how it'll help you in your freelance career, it should be pretty self-explanatory. If I have talent that has to deliver lines that are gonna be very specific, then using a teleprompter makes a lot of sense because they could just read off of it from the screen that's on the front of it. Now, I use the Desu T3, and what I like about this guy a lot is the fact that you just put it on the front of your lens. You don't have a giant apparatus at the bottom of your camera that lifts the level of it, it makes it all weird. I just have an adapter ring that goes in the front, I put it on the front of my camera lens, and then I could attach my iPad and I could actually start reading off lines right away. It also comes with a remote so I could actually turn turn it up, down, side to side, whatever you wanna do. Uh, you could actually use that in order for you to deliver lines, have a teleprompter, save you a bunch of time, and if you save a bunch of time, you actually make a little bit more money. Now number three is going to be a little bit unorthodox, but it's actually my iPad. Now. You might think that this is gonna help you as a freelancer because you can keep your notes, you can keep your Miller note and all your production notes that are going to be on this iPad. And that's actually true and I've done that a bunch. But one thing that I actually use it for is a networking tool. Now, when I first started freelancing, I was doing a lot of fitness work and I was going to a lot of expos and trying to meet different marketing managers in order to hopefully work with them one day. And one thing I wanted to do instead of just sending them a website to my Reel or my Instagram account was I actually kept all my best work on the iPad itself. Now, this might be a little bit different than a phone. When you're looking at a phone, you tend to not take a lot of the things you're looking at it seriously. If I'm looking at something that's really important, I'm probably reading on a bigger screen. That way I could see everything, I could see every detail, and I don't know, psychologically, I just take things more seriously when I'm looking on a bigger screen. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to give a more cinematic feel to some of my work, so I put it on my iPad, and I would hand it to those people in order for them to get a really good look at what I actually do. It's one thing to send a website to someone who might not ever see it, or send it to an Instagram account that might forget about it later. But if you're meeting somebody for the first time and they wanna know what you do, it actually is really impactful to just hand them an iPad, a big screen, they could see your best stuff, and it might stick in their mind a little bit more in terms of working with you in the future. Number four is going to be hard drives, and not just any hard drives, keeping a decent workflow of your memory and your storage is actually gonna make you a ton of money in the long run. The reason why is because you never know when that client's gonna come up and need extra deliverables at a later date. Now, the workflow that I like to use is I have my RAID drive in the Synology DS418, and I have a bunch of drives in there in order to hold about 54 terabytes of information. And and then on top of that, when I wanna edit something because it's a lot faster, I will use my Samsung T5 or T7 SSD drives. Now what makes this really valuable is that oftentimes if you're working on things like weddings or different corporate projects, if you store that footage and that client needs another deliverable, maybe they need an extra video,
video or an extra Instagram reel to be made, you could actually charge that on top of your invoice in order to get a little bit extra money for work that you've already done before. Borrowing in mind, you have to edit this extra footage, but say you're on the go or you're on a trip to a different country, you could actually edit that footage, deliver it to your client, and you actually might have some more spending money while you're on your trip. Overall, just keeping an archive of information in case of a client asking for it is a really great way to make some extra money in the long run. And another thing that I like to do on my invoices as well is include a storage fee. So if I have to keep all of that footage in case they do ask for something else, I keep a storage fee that's on there so it helps pay off those drives. So I'm not going out of pocket just to archive footage that might never be used anyways. Now number five, and if you haven't noticed, it's gonna be your lighting. Now you could use a variety of different lights, but one thing I will tell you is that once you start using light to your advantage, your work's gonna look better, it's gonna be more attractive to clients. And on top of that, it might be one of the big things that sets you apart from the other people that are offering the same services. One thing that I kind of slept on was going to be my lighting technique and making sure that that was dialed in, especially in the beginning of things. I would always just pull up to a location and whatever light was there is whatever light was there. But now that I'm getting a little bit more versed into my filmmaking and cinematography, as I improve my lighting techniques and different lighting setups I have for a variety of different jobs, it starts to attract more clients and bigger clients. Now, I don't freelance nearly as much as I used to, mostly because it's the winter time and I spent a lot of time on YouTube. But the last four years of me actually freelance filmmaking before this even started, as my lighting improved and as my cinematography improved, so did the budgets of some of these clients coming up. Whether you're somebody that's just starting, you're a seasoned veteran or whatever the case might be in your journey, investing in even one light is going to make a gigantic difference. Now, I'm gonna be pretty obvious here, I use a ton of Nanlite's products and if you wanna check out some of those, I'll leave that in the description down below. Now, you could use any light that you want to, but it's better to have it and know how to use it than not have it at all and think that everything's gonna be fine if you're not improving your lighting techniques. Now, the last category of gear that's actually helped me out a lot is actually having a B camera because if you don't have two cameras, you kind of barely have one. Now, your B camera is gonna be used for a variety of different things. Perhaps you're gonna be using a camera to be on your tripod and another one to be on a gimbal. And you don't have the time to switch between the two of them. Or you're using a two camera setup in an interview and obviously you need two cameras for two angle setup. Or you're somebody that has a camera for particular jobs and you use another camera to grow a YouTube channel. You could use a B camera for a variety of different reasons. And one of the things that I've been doing is using the Sony FX30 for pretty much everything that I don't use my main camera like the FX6 or the Red Komodo X. The Sony FX30 has been my gimbal camera. It's been my YouTube camera. I've used it for things like Instagram reels and pretty much anything under the sun. And I would say that it's made its money more than itself back in the year that I've had it in terms of AdSense and affiliates and sponsorships and even doing two camera interview setups. Now, you can use any camera that's going to be your B camera, but some of the criteria that I might suggest is that you want to keep something that's going to be in the same system and hopefully something that's going to have the same lens mount so you don't need different sets of lenses and hopefully something that has a log profile so it's a little bit easier to match if they are different brands. If you're something that's working as an active freelancer and you have the lenses you need on the single camera, one thing I'd recommend is the first investment you might want to make after you get those lenses and you also get that camera and you get your lighting as well is to maybe invest into a B camera. Also, if something goes wrong, you could always turn to it as well. Now, your B camera doesn't necessarily have to be a camera that might have less features. You could always just buy the same camera twice and that should cover your bases because if it's good for one, it should be good for the other. But nonetheless, you want to invest into having a secondary camera as a freelancer just in case something goes wrong and also it makes you a little bit money when you have those multi-camera setups. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I did steal this entire concept from my boy Ryan Cow, who makes a video every year about different pieces of gear that make him money. Now, I was going to be a little bit less specific because different budgets are going to change what you're going to pick in those categories. And for anything, I actually left the links down below so you might actually look at them in case you want to have some research in terms of what gear in those categories that you want to buy. That being said, I hope you guys learned something or at least enjoyed this video. And yeah, I haven't made it to Africa yet, but I'm still, I'm on my way. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.